Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today for a presentation on Snapdragon Space's workshop in Tempere. My name is Ron Fosner and I am an XR support engineer for Qualcomm and today I will be giving you an overview of Snapdragon Spaces. So what exactly is Snapdragon Spaces? Well, Qualcomm is one of the largest mobile chip manufacturers in the world and one of the things we've noticed is that as companies have come out with AR or VR headsets, they have also had to create software so that content creators can develop applications for those headsets. You may have noticed that these headsets come with their own software development kit. And while this makes it easier for you to create content for those platforms, the content is usually directly tied to that headset and only works on that headset. What we need is a more general purpose software platform that allows you to create content that will run across multiple headsets. And this is where Snapdragon Spaces comes in. So let's focus on augmented reality for a moment. AR comes in many forms. There is the AR content you see on social media, AR that's used in mobile games such as Pokemon Go. We have face and body filters, and then we have AR for head mounted displays. Snapdragon Spaces is centered around AR and a head-mounted display, but it does take some elements from mobile AR as well. To better enable content developers to get a running start developing XR content, Qualcomm has created and is continuing to develop Snapdragon Spaces to enrich the XR ecosystem. So what does Qualcomm do for the XR ecosystem? Well, we start with our XR1 and XR2 chips, which are optimized for AR and VR. To take advantage of these chips, we also provide perception features and technologies through software. And together with our reference designs that we provide to our XR hardware manufacturers, the OEMs making headsets with our chips. Ultimately, these turn into the amazing end products that will end up on your store shelves. We're currently engaging with XR developers directly through the Snapdragon Spaces XR development platform to enable content developers such as yourself to easily create content that will eventually be targeted for multiple devices. The concept behind Snapdragon Spaces is quite simple. Instead of OEMs having to build their own SDKs to access common perception features, we built the Snapdragon Spaces platform so developers can contribute to an ecosystem that OEMs can then tap into. At the same time, developers can minimize the number of platforms that they need to code for by developing once for Spaces and then having the resulting code work on all Spaces compatible platforms. For us at Qualcomm, having an active and enthusiastic developer ecosystem means that your feedback can help influence the development of our platform features so that together we can help you make the apps that you're envisioning. So let's talk a bit about the features that you get with the Snapdragon Spaces SDK. The top row illustrates some of the current features that you can find in the SDK, while the bottom row are part of our roadmap that we are currently working on to incorporate into the SDK. Let's go over some of those now. Positional tracking precisely maps the environment and estimates the position and orientation of the air glasses in six degrees of freedom within the 3D space. Since this is described through six values for position and orientation, this is typically abbreviated as sixth off. This enables a developer to understand and track the user's position relative to the world. As the user moves and turns, their position is tracked by the headset and air content will render into the scene properly relative to the user's location and orientation. Plane detection enables the recognition of horizontal and vertical surfaces in a physical environment. This capability enables a developer to anchor their air content to the surfaces, including walls, floors, and tables. Local anchors enable air content to be placed in a spatial space at a given position and orientation in the world. Positional tracking persists locally over the session. Image recognition and tracking enables the recognition and tracking of image targets in order to augment physical images with digital content. This means you can have things like images or QR codes that are in no fixed position in the 3D world but actually can move about and you can get updates on their position and orientation. Hand tracking. Gesture recognition that aims to provide accurate, low latency, first person point of view tracking of hand gestures and movements that integrate directly with onboard cameras and sensors that are supported by different hardware and operating systems. Let's give you a quick overview of the architecture of Snapdragon Spaces and how it is designed to be hardware agnostic and as future-proof as we can make it. 
The architecture of spaces is built around the OpenXR application interface. OpenXR is designed to take a variety of hardware platforms and create a standardized interface so that applications can be written to that interface without knowing much about the underlying hardware that's running on. What this means is that the hardware manufacturers design their software interface to the OpenXR standard, while the application users can use this standard interface and not worry about how the specific hardware is actually designed. In this diagram, you can see a variety of different hardware on the bottom layer interfacing to the OpenXR interface. An application can then use this interface to talk to the hardware no matter what the hardware is. As you can see from the top layer, there are a number of different ways to talk to the OpenXR interface. The most common way we expect content developers to interact with OpenXR is actually indirectly through the use of a game engine. In the case of Snapdragon Spaces, we're working with both Unreal and Unity since both of these engines already support OpenXR. As a content developer, you merely need to create content using one of these engines with its native OpenXR interface and all of the details about getting access to the hardware is taken care of for you. Another way of looking at it is who is providing the software layers that interact with each other. The bottom layer is provided by the OEM. They are providing the basic OpenXR interface that sits on top of their hardware. Since there is a detailed specification on exactly what the interface will do, this means that no matter what the underlying hardware is, a particular interface will react the same. The next layer is provided by Qualcomm as the Spaces Services layer. This layer takes care of things like input and rendering, as well as perception services, which are things like hand tracking, sixth off, controller support, etc. The top layer is where you, the developer, come in. You get to specify the specific attributes you're looking for in your application when you specify the OpenXR interface. If you're using a game engine, then nearly all of the interactions with the OpenXR layer are handled automatically. As new features come online, they will show up in the Spaces services as it gets updated. For example, hand tracking was recently added, and as a content developer, you would enable the OpenXR hand tracking extension when you specified the features you were looking for in your OpenXR interface. Assuming that hand tracking is available on the device you're running on, then when you describe the OpenXR features you want, the game engine will automatically initialize OpenXR for you and you can continue knowing that hand tracking functionality is available. Speaking of Unreal and Unity, Snapdragon Spaces provides OpenXR services that can be used natively by both Unreal and Unity and since you as a content creator can take advantage of that when writing your application, you simply need to install the Snapdragon OpenXR service on your device and then enable OpenXR support in the game engine. However, the majority of content creators are more familiar with Unity. So, today we're just going to focus on how to utilize Snapdragon Spaces for Unity. The official version of Unity that we test on is Unity 2020.3.17F1 LTS. You can use later versions, but this is the official version that we test on prior to release. Uh, we've seen some issues with 2021 versions, so we recommend that you use this version. And yes, we will be formalizing support for later versions in the near future. But we currently recommend that you install this particular version from the Unity Hub. Make sure you also select Android build support as well because Spaces is designed to run on Android platforms. I've switched over to the editor now. So let's actually create a Snapdragon Spaces project in Unity. I'm going to quickly go through the steps for configuring a Spaces project, but don't worry, all of these instructions are written out for you on the Snapdragon Spaces web portal, which I will talk about in a bit. I've got the SDK downloaded, and the Unity files unpacked. I have the recommended version of the editor up and running with Android support. So now let's create a project from scratch. You have a couple of options for the template, but the fastest one is the 3D sample scene with the Universal Render Pipeline, as this contains some of our preferred settings. URP is recommended for performance reasons. So let's create the project. So what we're going to do first is make sure that we can create Unity uh, projects for Android. So we're going to switch platforms. And we're going to wait while Unity does these changes for us. 
And once that's done, we're going to start importing the Snapdragon Spaces Unity package and then configuring the project. And I'm going to skip over this part. And it took about four minutes for that to complete. If you've never built for an Android project before, I would recommend attempting to do so now just to validate that you have the correct build environment set up. So the next thing is to import the spaces package. So we're going to open up the package manager. We are going to import a tarball. There are different ways of doing this, but this is probably the most straightforward way. I'm going to go into my spaces package, Unity. And you will see the Snapdragon Spaces package as a tarball. You can open that up and wait for it to import everything. It's going to import all of the project assets and settings and set up everything for Snapdragon Spaces. You also want to import the samples from the project because that's the fastest way of getting uh, exposure to some of the interfaces that we're going to be using. You will likely see this pop up. This is a difference between the old input system and the new input system. You want to click yes to ensure full functionality with the OpenXR input system. So let's do that. And Unity restarts. And we're back. And you can see that we have Snapdragon Spaces installed in the project. So let's close that. The next step is to set up the OpenXR input configurations. So we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and here we can really have XR Plugin Management and OpenXR. You want to enable OpenXR. And wait for that to complete. Enable Snapdragon Spaces. Go into the OpenXR. And here are all the options that you will have. Uh, as new options become available in the Spaces Services, you'll see them come up here. So here you get to select which ones you want. You'll notice that there are some import issues. So you can just click. You get a list of all things that are incorrect with the project. You can just say fix all. And they'll get corrected for you. And all the issues are resolved. So we're going to close this. Now as you're adding things, we see the Microsoft Mixed Reality Controller Profile. These are the input profiles that are provided. There's actually a number of them, so you can get to pick the one that you want. Usually you're going to want the mixed reality profile we have selected here, but if you want some different interactions, this is where you'd select it. This is OpenXR interpreting what the external system is doing and then passing it on to Unity, so you can select the input profile that you want to use for your application. And that's it. This project is now configured to run for Snapdragon Spaces. So let's get back to the presentation. So now that you can create AR applications, how do you get it into the hands of consumers? So we think that most people will publish their games on platforms like Google Play and then monetize them either through paper download, in-app purchases, or some other monetization scheme. Our goal with Snapdragon Spaces is to allow you to easily create content that will run on a large number of platforms and to easily get it into the hands of consumers. So let's take a quick overview of the current development kit. Our currently supported dev kit consists of a Motorola Edge Plus phone and the Lenovo Think Reality A3 glasses. This is our starter dev kit and we work closely with the folks at Motorola and Lenovo to deliver this platform to our early developers to start playing with the form factor. So you're probably wondering, does this run on any other Snapdragon powered mobile phones? And the answer is unfortunately no. We will be adding more hardware in a few months. 
and our plan is to offer SPACES support to all OEMs that wish to opt in to the SPACES ecosystem. Since this means that OEMs won't have to create and support their own SDK, we've had a lot of interest in Snapdragon SPACES. So let's take a look at some of the use cases for building applications with Snapdragon SPACES SDK. So what do you want to build? Here are some examples of what works in AR. But the key is leveraging features to create an experience that has added value with AR. So for example, if I'm creating a tabletop AR game, what am I bringing to the tabletop game that cannot be done already today with a 2D setup? Designing for AR opens up many new possibilities, and we encourage you to think outside the box and really push to create new ways of interacting, ways that are only possible in AR. So let's take a look at some of the best practices for developing AR applications. Uh, three of the main topics are the field of view, the surroundings, and how to get the user's attention. So for field of view, you've got a limited field of view, so generally you want to put content further back. Anything that's close up should be smaller. If you're going to be rendering a mesh like on a table or a floor, that can be pretty cool, but it can also break immersion. Uh, as you add content to a scene, you should also test frequently to make sure that you're not cluttering up the scene. In terms of surroundings, it should work for the average living room. Uh, if you know in particular that a particular space is going to be used, make sure there's nothing like tables or wires in the way. It'd be really unfortunate to have the user trip on them. If the environment is really dark or really bright, that can mess up six off. So you're going to be uh, having trouble tracking. Likewise, if you have the user facing a blank wall, there's nothing to track. So that can mess up sixed off as well. Finally, you should use uh, traditional things that will get the user's attention. So either a visual cue or an audio cue, flashing, things like that. Finally, there's things like positionally locked or head locked content. So that is another way of presenting information to the user. There are many options available, so you should feel free to experiment and see what works. So let's take a look at some of the next steps. The key to everything is through the developer portal. This URL is the gateway to Snapdragon Spaces. From here, you can order dev kits, download the SDK, as well as join in the user community through the Spaces forum and the blog. If you want to download the SDK, you'll be taken to a page like this. The current SDK is 0.7.0, and that supports Unity version 20. 2317F1 or Unreal version 4.27. We are planning on supporting Unreal 5 in the near future. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you.